guys! Today I'm going to be talking about life after birth control. Stay tuned! Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who have returned and have seen my videos, welcome back. For those of you who are new here and it's your first time watching a video, please hit that subscribe button, stick around if you're interested in learning about my life after getting an IUD removed. So let's jump right in. I don't want this video to be too long, but I hope that I can express myself and explain it to you in a way that you'll understand and that will be very easy for you to comprehend. Please consult your doctor or an adult that you trust when it comes to birth control because I am not your doctor. This is not medical advice. This is just my personal experience with birth control, um, specifically an IUD. Other people you know might have gone through something totally different. Some experiences are worse. Some experiences are better, but you just kind of have to go with it and it, you know, do whatever is right for you and your body. As women, we have a right to choose what goes in and out of our bodies. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so if you've seen my video, my last video about getting glammed up and talking about my IUD story, then you know I had started with birth control pills, but my commitment to birth control pills was not good, very forgetful, not taking them on time, that sort of deal. So years later, that's when I did an IUD. An IUD, for those of you watching or don't know what an IUD is, it is short for intrauterine device, okay? Intrauterine device, IUD. So what it is, is, is a birth control that goes into your cervix. So they have to insert it through your hoo-ha and up into your cervix. Um, and it's like a little small T that is flexible and it goes in there and there's a little string that sticks out of it that you have to check the first time that they put it in there. You have to check like once a while just to see that it's in there and make sure that it's not falling out and that everything is fine. Everything was always fine because I was able to feel it. Now, let's fast forward from that story to present day. What am I going through right now? How long has it been? And where am I headed? Okay, how long has it been? It was removed October of last year. So it's been a whole year without my IUD. Um, and it's been on uh, quite honestly the biggest roller coaster of my life. I knew that there was going to be a lot of ups and downs. I knew there was going to be a lot of like uh, discomforts and you know maybe mood swing. It has been a roller coaster. So what since October for November and December after that was removed and I would say it was in early October I would say it was like mid October around there so it was removed in October I would say about the second to last week of October if I remember correctly so mid October of 2019 I was spotting for like one or two days but I was in pain with like a whole shebang right for a week after that and actually i was spotting for a week i had pain and spotting for a whole week after the iud was re removed after that i didn't spot or had pain ever again for the month of november and december i continued to have normal menstrual cycle cramps so I would get the typical cramping that I got while I was on the, the IUD. Kind of like when you're about to get your period, that's when your cramps start. So I knew I was going to start a cycle 
I just didn't know when it was going to come because now I didn't have the IUD as opposed to before. I knew that I was just going to get the cramps, the pains, the cravings, the appetite, the you know fatigue, all of that stuff just without the actual period itself. This time, I was going through all the motions. I mean, the pain, the fatigue, the cramps, the moodiness, like, like everything. I never got a period for November, and then December came, I never got a period for December either. So come January of this year, I noticed that I was getting pain. I don't remember the exact date, Actually, I do. I think it was the 17th. So the 17th, I started having light spotting and then it went into an actual period. And that, for January and February, I remember distinctly that it would come and it would be heavy because I was losing a lot of blood. I had a lot of buildup, which was normal. It's common. Um, your doctor tells you that's going to happen. So just be aware. What really scared me though, was with my period, I was having a lot of blood clotting. I mean, blood clotting the size of dollars, dollar coins, okay? Yeah, that was scary, um, but I knew that it was a lot of tissue, it was mainly tissue, nothing was happening, I wasn't pregnant, it wasn't an ectopic pregnancy or anything like that. I was, you know, this, you know, this is a gross factor, but if you're a girl, you're a woman, you've been through this, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes blood clots come out and you have to inspect it. You have to make sure it's not a pregnancy, it's just tissue. So for me, it was just tissue. I was, you know, totally fine nothing you know scary like that so january february and march it's all the same patterns it would come it would start around the 17th around the second week of the month then it would stay um unfortunately the first three months of this year it was heavy and it would stay with me for three weeks for me it felt like two months because I felt like it was never gonna go away and it was horrible. So it would stay with me for about three weeks and then it simmered down to two weeks for about exactly uh, 14 days. Whereas normal women or regular women or a good 50% of the population out there has their, per their period for five days, five to seven days, I was having my period for up to 14 days after it was reduced from like three weeks, which was more than 14, obviously. So that was like the first three months. Then April came along, April, May, June, that's when quarantine hit and I was still in the same pattern. For April, May, and June, the pattern stayed within the two week timeline. So I would get it no later than the second week of the month and it would stay with me for 14 days exact. So it would start spotting, cramps and spotting into a light period, into heavy period. Then it would taper off into a light spotting again until it was gone and heavy cramping and all of that jazz. The blood clots had calmed down a little bit as well, I didn't experience too many. July, however, is when everything started to change and it scared me half to death. And if you're asking why would it scare you half to death, I'll explain. I have my phone with me. I have a, um, a calendar here within my app. So the app that I started using in June of this year is called Ovia or Ovia. I love this app. It's a free app. It's very helpful. I use it more for tracking my period because I am so irregular. It is easier for me to track my period than any other symptom. But if I do have symptoms that day that might be a little bit different than what I'm used to feeling, then I track it. So I've been tracking basically my period and every symptom that I get. 
I don't do all of that because honestly, I would be on that phone every day, every second of the, and I don't, ain't nobody got time for all of that. Okay. So in July, July, it's where this totally scared me because I kind of didn't like it. My period totally stopped. And when I say it totally stopped, I mean like it stopped. According to this, I was two weeks without a period, which was very different for me because like I said earlier that my periods were, were in the beginning of the month, but then they switched. In June, they switched to the 17th again, um, being mid to last week of the month. Then in July, it got scary because then I didn't have a period when I was supposed to get a period. I was supposed to get my period on the 17th of July as to prior dates that I've got in my period, it didn't show up. And on top of it not showing up, you guys, I was experiencing tenderness in my breast and my nipples and a whole bunch of like increasing appetites the whole nine you guys i honestly thought july was going to be my month mind you july was the month that we actually started trying completely to have a baby i got scared because i was like oh my god i got knocked up immediately not that i wasn't excited i was i was just going through I was having like a, a roller coaster of emotion, waiting for this for so long. It's something that you really, really want. And when you really want something, you just, any little thing that happens, you want it to be that. Sadly, it wasn't it. It was a bummer, but at the same time, it was a relief because we were still in the middle of COVID when everything was closed down, shut down, quarantine. Like I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't breathe. We were stuck in this house 24 seven. I just kept thinking to myself, that was what my ro roller coaster of emotions was. If I had ended up being pregnant in July, Lord have mercy. I was going to be with a quarantine baby in quarantine, during quarantine, giving birth in quarantine. It was a lot to process. So from the 30th of July to August 3rd, I had a five day period. That for me was very new because my periods don't come like in five day increments. As I said previously, they come in two week in increments, 14 days. I didn't get my period again till the last week of August which was on the 23rd to the 27th, again, another five day period, twice um, in a row, totally switching. I guess because my cycles have been bouncing and switching, September was like, all right, we're out, let's go. Wait, she's done, she's done. It's been really hard, it's been a very hard transition for me because the flip and flop of my cycle and my period has been very, very annoying and very stressful. Not just on me personally, but physically on my body. Prior to getting the IUD, I've already had heavy, heavy periods. That is the reason why I started using birth control. And you can hear my whole story where I do my makeup and talk about my IUD. Due to a lot of blood loss, I would always get anemic. Anemia happens when your hemoglobins are very, very low. So average number in your blood cells, it's, it's red blood cells or white blood cells, I'm sorry, that you lose. The average number is 12 and it should be 12 and higher. So 12 to 15, 12 to 17, high numbers are great. Now, if it starts to go under 12, so if it's like 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, da, 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 that's dangerous. If you get to the six, five, and four stage, that's very critical, it's very dangerous. It can be as bad as to causing death. It's been, it's been very bad. The last time I found out I was anemic, I had the IUD in me and they did blood work because I landed in the emergency room. So they did blood work. They checked 
everything in the emergency room. But they told me, you know you're anemic, right? You're at an eight and you need to take iron supplements and do this, that, and the third. And I was like, oh, okay. And I took iron supplements for such a long time. I noticed that I was always tired. I was always fatigued. Nothing really ever worked. I kept pushing forward. I kept moving forward. I kept doing things that I needed to do. I struggled physically. It, it's been a struggle. Come to find out this year, earlier this year where I ended up going to the hospital, it was actually for bleeding, uh, vag vaginal bleeding. Something was wrong. I had a lot of pain. They told me, come in and let's get you checked out. They determined that it wasn't a pregnancy. It wasn't anything like that. Like I wasn't losing a baby or anything like that. Everything turned out to be fine. The only difference is, is that my hemoglobin was even lower than the previous year. So last year it was at an eight. This year it was at a seven and slowly creeping down to the sixes. And that was not good. I followed up with my doctor. He said, you need to go to the hospital take a blood transfusion and uh, and we can we can do a follow-up and I said okay no problem I got that call on a Friday morning and I woke up Carlos and we got ready we packed a bag in case I needed to stay overnight which I ended up staying overnight landed in the hospital and uh, they took me back immediately they didn't let me sit out there for too long Thankfully, they let Carlos stay with me. They did two they did a transfusion on my right arm and then checked my blood. My blood went up. My hemoglobins went up a little. I think it was up to a nine. Then they did an iron IV infusion, which is where they put iron through IV in you, in your system. And they took blood work again. By then, I was already in my own private suite. After the iron, they checked my my blood levels and sadly the iron did not take. It ended up making my hemoglobins go down to a six, which was dangerous. So they immediately rushed another blood transfusion because it was critical. Something was going on that was not normal. With the second blood transfusion, my hemoglobin had gone up to, I think it was a 10, and it stayed at a 10, thankfully. It's still low, but it was stable enough to send me home so I can get to a doctor and be seen by a doctor. So that's what I did. They told me, follow up with your PCP, see, you know, see what she says, if you get worse, if you get even tired. If something happens, come back. Thankfully, I didn't need to go back to the emergency room and I didn't need another blood transfusion. I followed up with my PCP doctor literally the next day. She sent me to a blood specialist called a, a hematologist. They saw me and they did an iron IV infusion, but this iron was thicker. I actually just had this done yesterday yesterday being friday since today is saturday that took two hours they gave me benadryl i was very sleepy yesterday but i did notice that after my nap i had increasing energy back like i'm talking about i was able to clean my house that i had not been able to clean in probably over a month if not a month because my body was struggling. I wasn't able to do anything. Like I would clean here and there. I like to clean every Friday, leave everything immaculate. And I have not been able to do that for the longest time because I was struggling with, with my body. And I learned throughout this process that when you have anemia and your hemoglobins are that low, your body reacts in ways you don't understand and you don't know unless someone tells you. Things that happened to me while I was anemic was I was always constantly craving ice. I was always sleepy. I had body aches everywhere. Something that you like would naturally do whether it's cooking, whether it's cleaning and guess what 
that was not happening. And it's just been quite the roller coaster. It's important to me to get all of this under control and get my health back, which is what I'm working for, working towards and striving for, because I want to have a healthy body, I want to have a healthy baby, and I want to have a healthy pregnancy. That is my goal. That is my dream. I'm sharing this experience with all of you and whoever is willing to listen because it is important to know that trying to conceive is not as simple as it looks and it's not as easy as it may seem. You just don't have sex and have a baby. That, that doesn't work that way. And I've learned that the hard way. This is all a new experience for me. This is something that is not really spoken about a lot. It's not something you hear, but we also have to understand that there are other health issues and underlying health problems that our body may have that we don't know about that we need to get checked out. So it's not as simple as just having sex and getting pregnant and boom, you're, you got a baby. So this is what I've been going through. This is my life behind the camera. And I wanted to share my story with you because, you know, if you're going through this or similar, or you've gone through something that has been traumatic for your body, it's important to talk about it and get it out there because otherwise you'll just fall into a deep depression and anxiety and that can also affect whatever you're trying to do in life. So on to happy news. Since getting the treatment that I have been receiving with excellent care from everyone, I cannot complain. I am proud to say and happy to say that I'm getting my, my body back in shape. I'm getting my life back on track. I have another IV infusion. I will try to vlog that, um, but because it's like an open center, I don't want to get anybody else in the camera. So I'll figure out how to do that. Carlos is not allowed to come with me when I do that because it's only the, per the patient, so no visitors allowed, and it is a two hour process. And since they give me Benadryl, I do pass out. So I'll figure out how I can vlog my process while I go over there. But anyways, I am happy that I will be able to get my life back on track. My blood is getting taken care of, that everything is getting fixed and everything is regulating and getting back to normal and st stabilizing because my ultimate dream and my ultimate goal in life is to have a healthy baby, but more importantly, a healthy pregnancy to bring that baby to full term and to be able to have a nice natural delivery. Obviously, if something happens or I need to have a C-section, then that's totally different, but I, w I wanna be able to feel that. I don't know if that's weird to say. I hear that uh, when you're having a baby, it's worse than cramps. Like the cramps get 10 times worse. So we will see. Until then, um, I'm just gonna continue to focus on my health. I'm gonna continue to focus on myself. I will continue to bring you guys along in this journey because ugh, this is happening to me. I feel like if we can build a community and get this out there and share it with whoever needs to hear it, maybe it'll help someone. Maybe it'll help someone going through something similar. Maybe not exactly what I'm going through, but they will be able to relate to even a little piece of what I am saying in my story. I'm in a different stage of my life because I am in my 30s. I do understand that not everyone watching this video is in this stage, so it's very hard to comprehend or understand what I'm saying and what I'm going through, just know we all go through things in very different ways and in very different times. So your story is your own. My story is my own. Your story is your own. So if there is ever any doubt in the world that people will or won't understand you, it doesn't really matter because what happens to you is your experience and what happens to others is their experience. No one can tell you how to feel. 
No one can tell you what to do. No one can tell you what not to do, what to choose, what not to choose. We have the right to choose whatever works for our bodies, whatever works for us, and whatever makes us happy. Hang in there and Thank you for watching all the way till the very end. I'm sorry if this was a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. I hope that I can build with you guys and just grow together and create a little family and friendship, you know, that will last us a very long time. It's very difficult to meet people with similar stories or to hear things with similar stories especially nowadays with social media and everyone trying to portray something they're not i never would ever want to do that i want to be very transparent and very personal and very honest with all of you watching me and and just following along in this journey that is my story I hope you found it interesting. I hope you find it educational at least. And I hope it brings you a little bit of hope that uh, things will get better, that you can push forward and you can push through no matter how hard things get. So thank you again for following along in my journey. Thank you again for listening to Life After an IUD. It hasn't been the easiest, it's definitely been the roughest, and it hasn't been the funnest either. But I am so grateful and so thankful for the countless of doctors who have helped me, the nurses who are constantly in the hospitals working effortlessly day and night to help patients in their critical state as well as any any state they're in you guys are the true mvps especially now more than ever during covid so thank you guys greatly for your help and i'm excited to see the positive changes that my body is going to go through this process um i want this video to be an empowerment for us women i want us to come together i want us to be all about positivity love support and body positivity as well we have to love our bodies even when they don't love us back okay and that's what i'm doing it is not easy being confident it is not easy looking in the mirror and telling myself i look gorgeous it is not easy loving myself but i am learning to do it every day I am growing because of it and at the same time I am learning to accept what I can't change and change what I don't like. It takes a lot of personal strength for you to do that for yourself instead of having people tell you what you need to do and how you need to do it. Okay. Thank you guys for watching this video all the way up till the end. If you like this video and you want to see more content like this, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends. Also hit the subscribe button to join my family, be a part of my tribe because I look forward to getting to know you better. Also, don't forget to turn on your post notification bell so that you will never miss a future upload. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a good night and I will see you next time.